How are you? Have you ever been home alone and felt certain, certain that someone was watching you? Afraid to turn around lest you catch a ghostly visage out of the corner of your eye? Or that something would materialize out of nowhere in front of you? This feeling of being watched is known as Anwesenheit, a German word that means presence. I think you'll agree that a ghost story told aloud, especially in the dark, is incomparably more effective than the same story read in solitude. So I recommend that you find a cozy spot to settle into for the next six and a half minutes. Turn out all the lights. Make sure there are no interruptions to break the spell. And I will spin the tale by Doris Pitkin Buck entitled Aunt Agatha. She was not the one he had hoped to see that night. But because the young man was savoring old sights and sounds and all that is quickly forgotten on the other side of the grave, he turned his attention briefly to the woman seated in the remembered room. She wasn't old, but the eyes under her graying hair had lost their fire, making her seem older than she was. She kept those eyes steadily fixed on him, nor did her lids flicker. She accepted him, he supposed, as she had accepted odd new pieces of furniture in her room, as perhaps she accepted the even odder painting, all cubes and circles, that hung in the place of... wasn't it a drab watercolor? His wife's Aunt Agatha, he thought. Memories rushed back. He said in sheer surprise, I never imagined you'd change this place. I always thought of you, Aunt Agatha, as... Oh, set in your ways. And this, he shrugged and glanced at one beautiful shell on an asymmetrical table. He sighed a little. It must be fun to be alive now. Some think it is. But I didn't come back, he explained swiftly, to talk to you. I came to see Connie. Once more he looked around the room. Connie must have egged you into making all these changes. She was always so full of life, so ready to... to do anything. Yes, anything. The young man paid little attention. He asked with urgency, Connie, my wife, does she still live with you as the two of us did when I was alive? He looked at the woman's handsome, impassive face for a clue at the eyes that were black but not brilliant, at the hawk-like nose, the finely cut mouth. But there was no clue in them. They held only one comment on the universe, on all that was in it. They said, I am tired of you. Nothing more. Nothing more. The young man cried into that baffling face. Tonight Connie thought of me. Hard, hard. It must have been that way. She brought me back. I always knew she would. I must see Connie. To haunt her? The woman's voice was flat. The young man went toward her impulsively. Who are you to judge Connie? He demanded. You an old staid woman. Less alive than I am. Don't you know that Connie made her own laws? Only by those could she live. Perhaps tonight she'll laugh at me, laugh harder and more bitterly than the night she killed me. Perhaps even now she'll taunt me with Robert. I can still hear her tell what Robert meant to her. I don't care. I came back to Connie, not to haunt her, but because someone as vibrant as Connie draws people, because... She tried to hush him with her hand, but he went on. Aunt Agatha, help me. Earth is strange to me. 
I don't know what year it is, nor any of the things that happened after I was poisoned. Where is Robert now? And, and Connie? Suddenly his lips twisted. Connie! Constance! Why did anyone name her Constance? The murdered man walked to and fro, his footfalls soundless but his eyes bright with excitement. My wife was Carmen. That's what they ought to have called her. Maybe I should have fought with a woman like that, whipped the gypsy out of her. The woman's middle-aged eyes suddenly turned ugly. He felt her look him all over with envy. How young you are, she muttered. You always said that. Connie and I used to laugh at it. The corners of his eyes crinkled, for elderly aunts are elderly aunts, no matter on which side of the grave a man stands. Then he grew earnest. Tell me, Aunt Agatha, did they... did they punish her? Could anyone punish your wild Carmen but Carmen herself? Don't ask me questions. My time, I know it will be brief, though I've almost forgotten time's strange workings. I thought I'd see Connie right away. The woman got up. Go away. Go away. I'll make you. If her low voice had been a shout, it could not have been more startling. Take your damned youth out of my place. He stared at her in amazement. She no longer saw him. He was sure of that. She rubbed her eyes sleepily as she half listened to a man's petulant growl from the bedroom. She waited for the man's, Aren't you ever coming, Connie? Before she called back through a yawn, Yes, Robert. In a minute. Aunt Agatha Written by Doris Pitkin Buck Narrated by Edward E. French This recording of Aunt Agatha by Doris Pitkin Buck is copyright 2020, Edward E. French, all rights reserved. And to direct inquiries regarding this recording to Edward E. French at email edwardfrench06 at hotmail.com. I think our story begs the question, how much evil is there in the soul of each of us which we must recognize in order to overcome? What do you think? Thank you, as ever, for listening. I'll have another one for you next week.